Hey y'all, let's sew up this half zip together. I'm making my daughter one using this fleece. It's um, pretty thick, it's got no stretch vertically and a little bit horizontally. I have my side yoke pieces and then these are my center yep, front yoke pieces. I'm putting them right sides together and I'm matching the notches and the top and the bottom. It's just a nice straight line, so an easy seam. I'm going to be using my serger. I'm going to kind of skip through when I'm sewing. I'm just going to show you mostly setting up these seams and then not make you bear watching me actually sew each one. I'm going to top stitch these seams. I love top stitching on this particular pattern. In general, I'm not a huge top stitch lover but I find all the color blocking if I'm doing um, all the same fabric like I'm doing on this one the top stitching just really makes the little blocking stand out a little bit more also with all the color blocking um, I like the seams to lay really flat so another bonus for the top stitching okay all right now I have my two front yoke pieces since I've sewn them together I'm going to grab my back top yoke piece and we're going to stitch these together um, at the shoulders. I'm just going to apologize now. I got a new little phone stand. My last one finally bit the dust and this one I kept hitting it and it was very wobbly. So I tried my best y'all and I could not for the life of me quit hitting it and wobbling it. So I'm very sorry for all the wobbles. I'm stitching these shoulder seams. They're a perfect one-to-one -one match. You shouldn't need to stretch anything. So just stitch those up like normal. And then I'm also going to top stitch those as well. All right, after this, we are going to grab either the collar or the hood. I am doing a collar on this one. So here are my two collar pieces, my main and my lining. I used the same. And we're just going to stitch along the top of the collar. And now you're going to press your seam, press it wrong sides together. And I like to baste um, my two layers together around all the raw edges. It's an optional um, step, but it helps, especially if your fabric moves a lot. This fleece really didn't, but I highly encourage um, beginners to do that. So. Go ahead and throw a basting stitch along those raw edges. It'll make the next steps easier and it only takes a few seconds to run the basting stitches. I always think basting is worth the time you put into it because it makes the next step so much easier and quicker you get that time back easily and you avoid frustration, which you never want when you're trying to enjoy your hobby. All right, and you can top stitch along this top seam as well. Again, I really love the top stitching on this particular pattern, so I'm gonna top stitch that as well. You can do it as far or close to the seam as you want. Um, I believe I did mine about a quarter of an inch from the top, um, maybe even three eighths, I, th I believe actually. Um, I usually top stitch my zippers about three eighths inch away, and so I think I kind of matched, matched it to that. But you can do whatever you like the look of, you know, eighth of an inch, really tight little top stitch, or half an inch, a really wide one. Whatever you like, whatever your fabric's telling you at the moment. I mostly just used a straight stitch on all of this top stitching, if you're wondering. My fleece had barely any stretch at all, and I tested out a couple scraps, and it still could stretch all the stretch that it could with the straight stitch so I just used a straight stitch if your knit is stretchier you're gonna have to use a stretch top stitch 
All right, I'm grabbing my bodice, what I've sewn up so far, which is the back yoke and the front yoke. I marked my center back neckline when I cut it out. Anytime I cut anything out on the fold, I go ahead and mark with a notch. And then the collar has a notch as well, so you just align those back centers. You're gonna align the front edges of the collar to the front edges of the center yoke at the neckline. Then you're going to pin all the way across or clip all the way across Cross. You really shouldn't need to stretch either one. Um, the curves are a little bit different, so you might need to ease it in a little bit, but they should match at the seam allowance. You should not feel like you are stretching anything. Um, if you do, you might want to go back and check your pieces to the pattern pieces. It should not stretch, and neither should the hood if you are doing the hood. You can go ahead and stitch this along. If you're sewing up with a binding, then we have a separate binding video. This one, we're just gonna leave the seam. So just a double check, make sure your collars are lining up, the top and the seam are perfectly the same. If not, now's your chance to fix it before you put the zipper in. I'm gonna top stitch this seam here. Um, again, it, I love binding this because when the zipper is open, you kind of see the inside. So if you want to bind these seams, you can catch that video. Some fabrics, especially like fluffier fabrics like the fleece, you know, you can't really see that seam, especially if your um, threads match. So um, it's not something you have to do. Um, Certainly a lot of ready to wear doesn't do it, so. I just love the clean look of the binding on the inside. <laughs> All right, and now we're ready to put our zipper in. If you are using fabric with stretch, it's really important to use interfacing. I suggest cutting a three quarter inch strip and placing it right along these center edges. It should go from the top of the collar or, or the hood and all the way down this center part. Since mine has zero stretch, I didn't add the interfacing. If yours has any stretch, wobble wobble, um, don't skip the interfacing, okay? Because it'll make it wobbly is what it will do. As you're stretching it, the zipper um, ribbon will not stretch at all and your fabric will stretch and then it'll get all this wonky wavy look. All right, we're not binding on this video, so we're just gonna stitch the zipper straight to our fabric. Fold over the top of your zipper, the rest, you know, the extra little ribbon part, and you're just gonna align that top fold and the stop of the zipper at the very top of your collar. I'm also not adding a zipper guard in this video. Um, if you were adding a zipper guard, you would just add it to your zipper and then continue on just the same. I like, I like to turn and check. Make sure that zipper stop is exactly where I want it to be once I fold it down and top stitch. So it's aligned perfect for me. I think that looks great. So I'm going to keep um, pinning. I highly prefer pins to clips on this step. I, I just feel like it holds it a little bit nicer and neater. Neither of these stretch. My fleece doesn't stretch and my zipper doesn't stretch. That doesn't mean you can't ease one into the other. So you still need to be careful. You're trying to get it exactly one to one. Okay. On the youth, it is not an exact zipper size. The adults both have exact zipper sizes. So if you get the zipper that coordinates with your size, you will not have to trim your zipper at all. Now youth, I couldn't get the proportions perfect by using the zippers that are available. So you're going to have to trim most likely. I mark half inch away from the bottom and that's where I'm going to create my new zipper stop. 
Okay, so I'm going to do a zigzag. I'm going to do the very widest zigzag. And then where I marked that zipper start, I'm just going to do a really wide zigzag. And I do it about a quarter of an inch tall. Make sure you always hand crank to make sure your needle is not going to hit your zipper teeth, especially if you have a metal zipper. I have a plastic one here, but it would still break my needle. So make sure you hand crank to make sure you're all aligned perfectly. And then you're just going to go back and forth, back and forth. And that's going to be your new zipper stop. Okay. There you go. You can see I did it in white, so it's really easy to see. If I wasn't doing a video, I would do this in dark brown to match. Um, but you know, it's okay. I want you guys to be able to see what I'm doing. So now you have to be careful here when you're taking, a, I highly recommend taking the teeth off your seam allowance. You don't want those sharp, pokey plastic or metal. If you have a metal zipper, plastic or metal, um, zipper teeth in your seam allowance. So you can trim it down to half an inch or a quarter of an inch. I like to, once I trim it, I like to hit it with a little flame so that it doesn't unravel while I'm taking the teeth off. You can take the te teeth off with uh, some pliers. I believe they're needle nose pliers. I, I'm not real sure. Um, you just grab them, take them off. If they're plastic, you can also kind of just grab the teeth and crush them. <laughs> it's, you know, it's not the funnest thing to do, but it should only be a little bit. Um, and it really shouldn't take too long because you're only going to be removing a few, a few of them. It is important to hit it with a flame once you're done so that these ribbons don't unravel. Okay, it's nylon, so it will melt, and then once the ends are melted, they won't ravel. So as you can see, I'm still removing them. I just like to do it while I'm doing it so it doesn't unravel while I'm kind of tugging at the, at the teeth to come off. And then I'll do it again at the end just to make sure. Have you guys counted how many times I hit this new phone holder and wobbled the the camera, the phone. And I'm going to speed up me removing the rest of these teeth because it's rather boring. Again, you want to make sure you hit it with, with a flame so that it melts a little bit and it seals the zipper tape from raveling. Now when you pin it, your new zipper stop should be just a, just at a half an inch and above. So you don't want your zipper stop to be closer to the edge than half an inch. Okay. Once you stitch your half an inch, your zipper stop should be just above it. Okay, you don't want your needle going through your zipper stop. You want it just above that seam allowance. Okay, especially if you have a metal zipper, right? You do not want your needle, which will be right at half an inch, to be sewing through that metal zipper. So just starting at half an inch and above is where you want your zipper stop. Okay, so I have put on my zipper foot. I like to pull out my bobbin thread just so I have both threads already out and ready. I like to start with the zipper unzipped. I like to sew it mostly unzipped. I'm going to baste this together. And I use about um, a 3 8 inch seam allowance because that's how close I can get to the teeth. I want to get about an eighth of an inch away from the teeth, which is about 3 8 inch away from the edge. 
you want to make sure and get your seam allowance really even here because you want to see the same amount of zipper tape beside your zipper teeth all along your zipper or it's going to be kind of noticeable to the eye especially if your zipper is a high contrast like mine is mine is a dark brown against the lighter fabric so if my seam allowance isn't even it's going to be really noticeable so go nice and slow baste it first don't skip basting on a zipper um, if you have to pull threads on a zipper it can really tear up your zipper it's just you know that zipper tape is not the strongest it can't withstand getting a bunch of holes in it over and over so the seam ripper is can be a little bit hard on zippers so baste that way if you need to pull out the basting stitch it's really easy on you and the zipper <laughs> there we go so mine looks pretty good on that side now I'm gonna baste it on the other side I'm just gonna repeat the exact same thing the only thing that's different on here is you're gonna be really careful and check to make sure that everything's lining up the same the top zipper stop is exactly the same spot as the top on your other side on the collar see I'm already flipping it out over to make sure that zipper stop is exactly the same as my other side and the same thing with this collar seam it's going to be very noticeable if when you zip it up your collar seam doesn't align so you'll see I'm going to zip it up and I'm just gonna double check to make sure that seam is lined up right here. If it doesn't, which mine isn't perfect, I'm gonna move that pin, because like I said, neither of them stretch, but you can ease it in. So it's very easy, even though neither of these stretch, to not get them perfectly even the first time. Check it, make sure. Before you even baste it, make sure. And then after you baste it, check it again. It's one of those things that if you get it off, it's really quite noticeable, so you wanna be really particular about it. Same at the very top of the collar. If it doesn't look perfect right now, it's not gonna look perfect after you sew it. So be a little meticulous right here and get it just so before sewing it on. And again, I highly, highly recommend basting so that you can check one more time and make sure you get them nice and even so that you're happy with your end result. It's worth the extra time of being a bit meticulous and double, triple, quadruple checking to get that finished jacket that when you zip it up, all those seams and the top edge aligns perfectly and you're so proud. Of course, you want the bottom edge to also line up. That should be a little bit easier. Um, the trickiest part is getting this top edge and this seam where either the collar or the hood meets the bodice. It's a little bit trickier. That's the one that might take you a couple tries before you get it just, just, just perfect enough to baste it on. As you can see, I've had to move mine a sixteenth of an inch a few times but I promise it's worth it to be super meticulous right here sometimes I will mark um, the opposite zipper tooth when I do the first one so that I know exactly where that zipper tooth should align to the seam I didn't do that this time so I'm having to move it one thirty second of an inch to get it perfect enough for me I'm still not happy with it you guys I will sit here and fiddle with stuff for so long because if it's not perfectly even it, it will bother me every time I wear it or my little one wears it so I am super meticulous with lining up the seams as you can see now I'm regretting not marking that zipper tooth so I'm trying to find the perfect zipper tooth <laughs> To make sure they align perfectly. Well, 
Let's see if I got it this time. I think that's finally it. <laughs> Don't be discouraged if it takes you a while to get it, okay? Once you get it and you zip up that jacket and it's perfect, it's it feels great. So be meticulous. It's all right. Again, the bottom is fairly easy. Just line it up to the bottom the same and then pin in between. You shouldn't be stretching anything here, but you know what? It's really easy to ease one into the other, which is why you have to be meticulous in getting them to be exactly the same on those points where your eye can really tell if they're off. Okay, we're going to do the same thing and baste. You have to move your zipper so that you're not stitching right by the zipper pull. I like to do most of mine where it's um, open, but around the bottom you're going to have to zip it up. So a little bit with it all zipped up. And then once you have enough behind you that you can pull the zipper behind your foot, you can do that. You want to leave your needle down. If you need to lift up your foot, you can lift up your foot. but leave your needle down so you don't have any skipped stitches. It doesn't jump at all. You shouldn't be so close to the zipper teeth that you can't get your zipper to pull through. If you're stitching that close to the zipper teeth, it's going to be difficult to get the zipper up and down without um, catching your fabric. You need a little bit of the zipper tape on each side so that the pull can fit easily and smoothly. So nice and slow here at the top, making sure to get that little tiny folded piece down nicely and neatly. I like to use a pin as like a tiny little finger. If you can see, that's what I'm doing and holding the pin and kind of guiding it with the pin so that I can hold it really closely. Okay, so now we're all basted up and we have one final check to make sure we got this zipper in exactly how we want it before we make the final stitch. I had some basting thread in the way. There we go. And I'm happy with it. It looks good. Everything's even. The bottom, the collar seam, the very top. So now what we're going to do is we're going to top stitch it and that will be our final stitch. We're not we're going to change it from a basting stitch to whatever your final stitch is going to be. So we're going to be pressing the zipper to tape back and top stitching it. You want to make sure that you're not pulling the fabric, but um you're you're not leaving any extra fabric by that by the zipper teeth either. So you want to smooth it, all the fabric away from the zipper teeth without stretching it at all. Now this is easier with more stable fabric. I have fleece that barely stretches at all. So really easy to not stretch because it just doesn't stretch very much. If your fabric is super stretchy, that's where that interfacing really comes in handy. The um, three quarters inch should cover all the area that you are stitching right now, it should not stretch um, vertically at all, and it will keep it from stretching too much horizontally, even if you're using a knit interfacing, it won't quite stretch that much. So it'll top stitch your zipper guard down. I used a dark brown bobbin thread here, which is why it's hard to see my stitch on the zipper, I highly recommend matching your bobbin thread to your zipper tape. That way your stitch doesn't stick out um, a ton like my basting stitch does. You can see that basting stitch really clearly. You can pull your basting stitch now if you want. If you use matching thread for your basting stitch as well, I usually leave mine. I Maybe that's super lazy, um, but you can pull it all out if you want to. 
if it doesn't match. I will definitely pull this one since I didn't use matching so that you could see it really clearly on the video. Normally I would use matching and I just leave it. Um, and we're just going to go up the other side doing the exact same thing. Um, you want to make sure you keep a nice even seam allowance here. You can do whatever seam allowance within the width of your zipper tape. So most zipper tape you're going to have about 3 8 inch. Um, so anything under 3 8 inch is, is what you're going to need to top stitch. So about a quarter of an inch is what most people do. Um, it's a little difficult to get any closer, I think. Um, and any farther than, you know, you're right on the edge of that zipper tooth. So again, I used a brown thread, so it's nice and hidden. This is the bot, the basting one that you can pull if you want to pull. If you used matching, it's to your discretion if you want to pull it or not. <laughs> but now, even though we haven't covered the this um, seam allowance and zipper teeth, you know, you you it still looks like a, a clean finish. I'm just zipping down this little folded back piece. It got away from me on the underside, so I'm just stitching in the ditch, getting that little folded piece a little bit closer. All right, we're done with our zipper. It was nice and easy. The, the most important part is being really meticulous about letting everything line up before you actually make your stitch. I'm not going to make you watch me pull this basting stitch out, but um, we're done. We have the zipper in. Ooh la la. Probably the part you were dreading if you haven't done a zipper. It's really not that hard. The most meticulous step is making sure that those seams align and after that it's pretty easy peasy all right we're ready for our next step so you're gonna grab your bottom body piece this is the same for the front and back um, you're gonna align the center with your zipper and then the edges um, on the left and the right side I highly prefer to stitch across the zipper on my sewing machine. This is just cautious, um, just in case I wasn't meticulous enough getting my zipper guard in the correct spot. I can go nice and slowly on my sewing machine and be nice and careful versus my serger. And there you go, my zipper guard is right above that stitch line, exactly what I wanted. Now I'm just going to surge the rest of it knowing that I'm not going to hit any zipper teeth. It'll be just fine. Now I'm going to press the seam allowance down and top stitch. I'm so sorry how many times I wobble the phone, y'all. I promise I was trying my best. Make sure you're careful when you're ironing around your zipper. It's made from nylon. Nylon will melt. So if you hold a hot iron on your zipper, it will melt. So just be careful around that zipper when you're pressing. Again, I love the top stitching on this one. I like to top stitch it down away from the zipper because obviously I don't want to stitch on the zipper. Okay, and up next we're just going to repeat with the back yoke piece and the back bottom body piece. So they align super easily. Nothing needs to stretch either way. Um, align it at the centers, the left and the right side, stitch across and top stitch. If you would like to top stitch, I like to press that one down away from the yoke as well, just to match the front. And this is a crop length, just in case you're wondering. Um, so the bottom body part is pretty short. And then the shirt length will just look more like a square versus my short little rectangle for the crop. All right, now that we have the bodies on, 
and top stitched, we're gonna move on to the sleeves. So you're gonna open your bodice up, and here's you know, the front and the back open up, right sides up, and then you're gonna grab your sleeve. I have the plain sleeve here, um, so I just have one sleeve piece. Um, if you're doing the color block, you're just gonna do the top sleeve just like this and then stitch the bottom to the top part. So you're gonna match corners first. Remember that the center of the sleeve is not the seam, okay? Mm -hmm. Your back bodice has a little bit taller arm side because your shoulders are a little bit taller and rounder in the back versus the front. So the seam is not the center. And we're just going to repeat with the opposite sleeve, right sides together, aligning the two corners and then pinning in between. Um, neither should have to stretch to fit, shouldn't even have to ease it in very much, um, depending on what size you're doing and um, if you're doing the V figure or hourglass figure, if you're doing the adult. The V figure adult is more of a dropped shoulder versus a true dolman. So those sleeves have a little bit more of a bell shape versus a dolman shape, but it's still, it still should not need to stretch. You'll just have a little bit more easing because they're a little bit more curved than this youth size or the hourglass um, adult one as well. Again, loving the top stitching. I'm gonna to top stitch this one. You can, um, traditionally you will Press the seam allowance towards the bodice and top stitch it that way, but um, you can top stitch it down towards the sleeve if that's what you prefer. Um, I'm top stitching mine towards the bodice like tradition tells me to. Alright, now we're going to put our front and back right sides together, just like if the sweatshirt was inside out, and we're going to pin it from the wrist to the armpit down to the bottom and then we're going to stitch it just like that now i top stitched all my seams already if you did not top stitch your seams you want to make sure you stitch whichever way you want your seams to go so if you want your seams to go like mine you're going to start at the wrist and stitch to the armpit down the shirt so that your seams go towards the bodice and down to the bottom of the shirt nothing tricky here Everything should be one-to-one, -one, no stretching, no easing. It does kind of have a sharp corner with this dolman sleeve on the armpit area. Just make sure you are smoothing your fabric out if you're using a serger and not cutting into your seam allowance too much. You want to put it in your serger straight versus trying to sew it like an L, if that makes sense. You want to straighten out your seam as it's feeding through your machine. And we're just going to repeat on the other side. I'm going to speed it up because it's a very simple step and a little boring to watch me do it a second time. Okay, now we're going to do the cuffs. So I'm going to keep my shirt inside out. And my cuffs I'm going to do right sides together. Sew up the side seam up here. And we're going to make a tube or two tubes, in fact, since we have two sleeves. Once we're done stitching that little side seam, we're going to fold them vertically now to create our little cuffs. I like to make sure to press my seam allowance all going one way and then I press the seam allowance on the sleeve going the other way when I attach it. So I mark the, the halfway mark and you have a notch on your sleeve that already, your sleeve cuff, I'm sorry, that already marks halfway. And you actually should have a notch on your sleeve as well. I missed that when I was cutting. So just align the half point notches and then you're also gonna align all of the seams. So the seam on the cuff and then the seam on the sleeve. I like to press my seam allowances on the cuff one way, the same way, and then this seam allowance on the sleeve the other way. Just helps reduce bulk a tiny bit right there. 
and you're gonna have to stretch your cuff just a tiny bit these cuffs don't stretch a ton to the sleeve but you're gonna have to stretch just a little bit as you stitch and then you can just pop your cuff out the other way and you're done and just repeat on the other sleeve I'm not gonna make you watch me repeat that on the other sleeve instead I'm gonna go ahead and do the bottom band for you which is our very last step here we are going to repeat basically the exact same process we just did on the sleeve cuffs on the bottom band. So here's our bottom band. I'm going to fold it in a half horizontally, right sides together, stitch our one little side seam right here. This is going to make a big old circle. And then we are going to fold it wrong sides together vertically to make our bottom band. Again, just like the cuffs, I like to press my seam allowance on my band all going the same way. I have my center marked with a notch already and then we're also going to mark quarter points on here so we're just going to align the seam the seam is going to be our first mark and then the opposite side will be our second mark we're going to align those on top of each other and then mark these quarter points So that's how you mark it into even quarter marks, as the tutorial will tell you. We don't need to mark our body unless you have not marked the center back and front. I always do a notch whenever I cut pieces on the fold, so I already have a notch there. If you don't, you'll have to find the center front and the center back. And then our side seams are our other quarter points. Personally, I like to align the seam of the band with a side seam. You can put the, the seam aligned in the back if, if you prefer. Um, I prefer it on the side seam, but whatever you like. See, here's, here's my seam. I have it all pressed one way, and then the seam of the shirt is going to go the other way to nest a little bit. The band is going to be smaller than the shirt, so you'll have to slightly stretch the band to fit the shirt. And that's it. That's our last step. We have a full half zip sweatshirt all done. Hope you liked sewing this up with me. Maybe there was a tip or trick or two that might help you be a little more confident sewing yours up. If you do sew one up, I would love to see it. Don't forget to tag us and share with us on whatever social media platform you like. Thanks for watching, and I'll see y'all next time.